insurance. Before we can tell you, Northern Giant and Dublin, I want to take you back 30 years ago. My first previous year covering it was 1980 in Codex. Codex is genuine risk going around the turn right here. Codex, Angel Cadero, come clean now. Did he or did he not bumper? Oh, it took two weeks to decide that, but he didn't bumper. <laughs> Actually, we, and we won five of them, but we had to win that one three times. <laughs> yes, you did. Once on the track, once in the steward stand, and once in the commission. So, but uh, so I think they, they made the right moment. decision for us. Moving ahead, obviously you mentioned five. Um, Northern Giant and Dublin, we'll start with Northern Giant number four, um, Terry Thompson. Now, Bob's with you now. Can you guys explain to us the whole jockey switch here? From the well, yeah, Gomez, from looking yeah. to Lucky to Dublin. Sure. You guys get together with Switch Up. Yeah, well, Bob, you know, he, he realizes that I'm getting down in years and there's not many more opportunities to run in the Preakness. He felt sorry for me. He said, look, if you want my rider, just take it. It's okay. Uh, I'll get along with the, you know, one of the Bug Boys. I got a lot of good years left to me. So he said, uh, if Gomez is, you know, going to help you out and get you over to maybe one of these last runs, go ahead and take it. <laughs> He had a great line the other day. He said, hey, Peyton Manning's sitting in the locker room, and uh, he doesn't have a place to play. I want to sign him. Yeah, Bob had a better one. He said he threw five interceptions and gave the boy that too. Uh, unfortunately, not against the Ravens. Uh, yeah, right. Or here. Tell, tell us about Northern Giant. Well, we're taking a little swing at the fences here, obviously. Uh, his race in the uh, Louisiana Derby was pretty impressive, and um, I thought that at that point he was on his way to maybe you know, getting into the Derby itself and onto the Preakness here, but um, he's, he came back in the lanes in and ran a good second on a synthetic track, which I don't think he cared for, but then he bombed pretty bad in the Arkansas Derby. We found after that he had a pharyngitis, and we cleared that up. So if we can get one of those races, those two previous ones back, I think he'll get a piece of it. And the, the magnitude of the race, the importance of the race, we did. We don't have any grandiose ideas. We're just going to sweep by everybody and uh, upset them that much. But we, we feel like we can maybe get a piece of it and keep it interesting. And we'll move on to Dublin. Uh, starts outside number 12, uh, 15 to 1 now. Uh, initial reaction of the post. Not 15 to 1, he's 10, you get a better one. Oh, okay. <laughs> you haven't lost yeah, he might be 15. Hey, he's he's gonna, I'm gonna, I'll bet you dinner is less than 10. He might. <laughs> so, where are we going to eat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're buying, so go ahead. Um, give us your reaction to being on the outside. I didn't like it. No, really. Bob said you I mean, like it. No, I, I didn't like it. Bob kind of went to me when, when, it, when, it, when it came up 12. He said, that's you, and bam, sure as hell it was. But, uh, you know, I don't think anybody wants the one or the 12 in a, in a horse race. And uh, we, we're going to live with it. Again, it's a pretty good run to the turn, like all of us say. But uh, like there are no ugly brines on Wednesday night, there are no bad holes if you're in the pregnancy. So we're going uh, to make the most of it. We'll get a pretty good run at it. See what we can do. I like that. Right? Yeah. Uh, you will get equal time, I promise. <laughs> yeah. You would have been extremely complimentary in your uh, quarter century coming here, racing in Baltimore. I know you love it. Too. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I've said this year for 30 years now, uh, you know, the, the Derby is so intense and it, it is a, such a great event and uh, you soak that one up. But then when you come to Baltimore, the warmth and the hospitality here is second to none. And nobody does it better for us. Nobody treats us better than they do in Baltimore here. And it's great fun to come here. I think even Bob and I were talking over dinner here a couple of nights ago. Even if you didn't have a great contender, you'd like to come to the Preakness because it's just a great event and a lot of fun. Uh, they got us all gathered up in the same locker room there. I get a chance to see uh, who's sore and who's not. And uh, we, we walk around and uh, fraternize. And there's a great camaraderie with the other trainers. And I think my colleagues feel the same way. It's a, it's a special event. And uh, I'd like to make a few more. And, Maybe we'll get lucky and get another one. No, that's a bad choice of words. We don't want to, we don't want to use lucky in the conversation here. Let's, uh, maybe we'll get fortunate and we'll get us a Fortunate one. Sounds like a song. Wayne, thank you. Good 